This Saturday, we are setting up to sell at a local fall market. Now, today is Monday, so the market is five days from now, and we have a lot of things to make. All right, so here's my plan. First, I wanna show you the products we're bringing to the show, and then we'll talk a little bit about our approach and some considerations uh, for this particular show. And then at the end, we'll wrap it up by sharing the results. So I'm gonna take you through the whole process uh, of actually preparing for a show and to see if our strategies are successful, to see what we learned. Uh, I think it'll be really eye-opening for me uh, and hopefully you as well. So let's get started. Man, what a week. I think we made over 50, I know we made over 50 items uh, this week in prep for this show. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this. It's being called a fall festival. So there are going to be food trucks, there's going to be pumpkin painting, uh, and it's hosted by our local government, by our local city uh, at the community center. So this isn't part of a big festival. Um, it's a one day event, uh, middle of October, uh, in Kentucky, so we're in the heart of fall. Um, I live in a city of about 30,000 people, um, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, and on the contract, this event said they're expecting more than 500. They were pretty vague um, on it. That is a question mark. Um, they've advertised it on local radio, um, on social media, so there's definitely, they pushed it in advertisement. I think there's gonna be traffic there. I found out there's gonna be 45 vendors. Uh, so. It kind of gives you an idea on the size of event. So why did we choose to do this event? Well, one, it's super close to our house. It's less than a 10 minute drive, easy setup. We've been there before. Um, we don't have to get up super early and drive two hours and set up and get there at 5 a.m. We literally are gonna be there at 7.30 to set up for an event that starts at nine o'clock. One of the main things that led us to this event was we've had a lot of success with our lanterns, specifically our fall leave lanterns that I talked in the previous video why we got the new Thunder Laser. That's been very popular. We've sold over 200 of those now online, but we've never sold them in person. We've never sold them locally. So we're really curious on how they're gonna be received and uh, they've been a hit online. We think they're gonna be a hit in person as well. Uh, so we've made 25 leaf lanterns, um, I believe. We're, oh, we're about 50 lanterns total. I think 25 of them are leaves. That product matches up with this event really, really well. So we've really gone through a lot of effort to try to match our products to the clientele um, with styles, with um, price points, with uh, just grab and go things, things that kids um, will be interested in. So we thought all that through and tried to match our products to that. So that leads us into our particular strategy for this event. I don't care what kind of business you're running, whether it's a products business or a services business, it does not matter. It is imperative and the a top priority to get your product or service in front of your ideal customer. You could get your product in front of the wrong customer all day long, and you, it could be a million of the wrong customers, and you could think, wow, I've got it in front of a million people. But if those people aren't interested, it doesn't matter. You'll have a lot greater success. I've talked about this extensively. I'll link in a playlist up here of all the different ways and how I've talked about this in the past, but it is imperative to match your product to your customer. My goal is to create products for these people at these events or um, in anything that I do is that people need, want, and can't live without. In a nutshell, my strategy is to figure out who is going to be there, who I'm going to be in front of, and to make a product that they will like and that they're willing to buy. So we're bringing a total of just over $2,000 in inventory for the day. And honestly, with the time and money that we have into this, if we don't sell $500 um, worth of products tomorrow, I'll consider this a bust. Just with the level investment that we have, anything less than that, I'm, I'll be pretty disappointed. Honestly, I, I don't know what's gonna happen, but let's see if we can make $500 or more, hopefully blow it out of the water. Uh, a thousand would be great. Selling 50% of our inventory, 
That'd be fantastic. Uh, but let's see what happens. All right, it's time to load the car. But first, let's hear from this week's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by PCB Way. PCB Way is your one stop for all your PCB, CNC, 3D printing, sheet metal services. They do it all. Offering instant quotes, quick turnaround, and fast shipping, PCB Way is a great resource to have for your next project. So if you would like to incorporate electronics into your next project, or you need a rapid prototype yourself, look no further than PCB Way. All right, so we are about an hour in, and we just crossed the $250 mark of sales. So exciting. A lot of our sales are from people that were already here, like other vendors. And I think that's something that's good to keep in mind. Other vendors can be your customers as well. Let's get into the results and what we learned from this show. Remember before the show, uh, one of my main concerns was attendance. And that actually came true. It was a true worry. So they were expecting 500 people and only 250 to 300. I asked the event organizer afterwards how many people came and that's how many they estimated. All right, so let's get into a few stats for the day. We made a total of 27 sales. So if you do the math, if there was 250 to 300 people and we made 27 total sales, we sold to 10% of the people that walked through the door, which is pretty crazy to think about that. That is very high. And I think that points to how good our strategy was going into it. So those 27 sales generated a revenue of $853. Remember our goal was 500 and we hit 500 before lunchtime. So you're probably wondering, well, what sold? How did you generate those sales? Um, what items were bought? So let's start with the least successful product and go all the way to our best seller. Probably the biggest surprise for the day, our least successful items were the pumpkin trays. The CNC pumpkin trays just did not hit for whatever reason. Got a lot of looks. Um, we tried, you know, uh, pitching them. We priced them at $45, which is a completely fair price for the large ones. And when we didn't get any interest throughout the day, we lowered that price to 35 just to see if it was price and still nothing. So that leads me to believe that that product was just Pumpkins were just a complete miss. So the next item we sold seven out of 11 that we brought and that was the DIY Halloween house kits. They were a big hit. We sold them for $10 each. That was a great one to throw in. Um, obviously we didn't generate a lot of money off those but we had less than a dollar into them. So the profit margin was very good. Um, and we sold seven out of 11. So that was a good item. All right, so the next one, we sold three out of the three that we brought were these simple catch-all trays that you actually didn't even see me make because I made them last year and they were left over just from, I made them a long time ago. And so we put them out there, put $25 on them. They're just basic, uh, two walnut and one maple. And those went really quickly, surprisingly. The next item that got a lot of attention, we sold three out of the three that we brought. And those were the kitchen bag and aluminum foil organizers. Those are really popular. We sold those for $60 a piece, which was a little high. You could tell people are hesitant, but they really, really, it solves a problem. Everybody has these bags everywhere in their drawer and they're willing to pay money to solve that problem. Great product. All right. And then our best seller. Remember, I didn't know how the lanterns were going to sell. Uh, the lanterns, we sold 24 out of the 50 lanterns that we brought and we sold them for 25 or two for 40. And we had a, we only had two $25 purchases and then the rest of them bought multiple. They, um, the, the strategy of having fall ones and winter ones um, really worked with that two for 40 strategy because they could use one now and then they can use one for their Christmas decor. So our grand total for the day was $853. We shattered our goal of 500, 500. If we didn't sell 500, the day was gonna be a bust. So what was the success? Why did we have the success? Even though there was low attendance numbers, how were we able to send it to sell to 10% of the people that walked in that building? Here are some key takeaways on how we were able to do that. It's not one single thing. I wanna reiterate that. This is an approach. It 
it is all these things working together. It's not just about coming up with the greatest product. It's not just about how we price. It's not just about getting to an event that is reputable and is gonna have good attendance. It's not just about one of these things. It's all of these things together. I believe these were our keys to success. The number one was accepting credit cards. $572 of our $853 was accepted through credit cards. So accepting credit cards is absolutely vital. I also think the strategy of having the large flower. We didn't sell the large flower and that was kind of intentional and I'm okay with that. I priced it at $300, but it was the biggest item of the whole show. It was right in the aisle. People saw it. So many people complimented it. Then we could initiate a conversation with them. Another thing that it did was set the anchor price for our booth. They would see this item, they'd see the $300 price point, and they would be like, whoa. And then they walk into the booth and everything else seems like a deal because they saw that $300 price point. So when they walk in and they see our lanterns and they're beautiful as well, and they're only 25 or two for 40, they're like, that seems like a really good deal. So the third thing is helping people envision our products in their space and how they're gonna use them. The LED lights from the gym that we were in were really, you couldn't even see the lights in our lanterns. A lot of people didn't even know they lit up. So I got the idea, I was like, we need to start showing pictures. We didn't sell one lantern in the first hour. Every person that came up after that, we showed them the picture um, of the lantern in a dark space because it reflects off the walls. And they were like, oh my goodness, that's so beautiful. And we sold 24 of those things the rest of the day. Without uh, those pictures, I'm betting we wouldn't even sold 10 lanterns. So whatever your product is, help people envision it in their space and how they're gonna use it and how's it gonna make them feel and how's it going to change their space. All right, the fifth thing that I kinda already hit on a little bit but was engaging in conversation. Every single person that walked by that was shopping, we said, hey, how are you today? That was it. And let them guide the conversation from there. A lot of them just continued walking but a lot of them came in too. If you go and watch uh, how other vendors are acting behind their booth, most of them don't even make eye contact with their customers. Everybody, is like this. Now, do you wanna watch this video if I have my phone in my face and I have my phone buried and I can't, I'm not making eye contact with you, I'm not engaging with you? No, are people gonna to wanna to buy your items at a vendor booth if you're just sitting back there and letting people just walk by and with your head buried in your phone? Absolutely not. Like, I'm not talking about like sell and like, be out there and being over the top, but just simply being present and engaging. And when they're, when someone's looking at a product, show them, say, or just tell them something about it. Say, yeah, this has a food safe finish on it. And so it can be used for cheese and crackers or it can be used for vegetables. That's all you're doing is helping them understand the product because they don't know any of those things. All right, the last one is putting a little effort in your booth. There was several people at this event that just simply set their items on a white plastic table. That was it. We didn't do a lot. We literally spent 45 minutes setting up our booth. The only thing that we did was we had a couple rustic crates that we could kind of uh, layer things and get, get things up higher and get a little dimension. And then we used orange tablecloths. Literally, that's all we did. And we kept it on theme. Keep that in mind. A little bit of effort here can go a long ways to stand out and to get people feeling, right, we're selling, this was a fall festival, so we made it look like fall and followed that theme with both our setup, but also our products. Overall, I know that a little bit of forethought and a little bit of preparation will go a long ways when it comes to selling the things that you make at markets and shows. So my hope in making this video is that you see more success uh, selling the things that you make. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.